Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new series, which you may recognize in terms of the title and the thumbnail. This series is a remake of a remake, uh, which was the conventional starting step series, in which I essentially did a tutorialized playthrough of the starting steps you need to get out of the solar system. That's what this series will be, and I'm going to explain what it will and what it won't be. What this series will be is me going along and explaining each of my actions, why I do them, and how you go from starting as a conventional empire and expanding upwards. The reason I chose conventional is because I feel it's the best for newer players. If you want a trans-Newtonian start, you can go check out my latest series. There are setup videos for that on how to do it, but that series is less tutorialized than this one. What it won't be this series is a long format playthrough. Uh, I'm not playing for ever. Uh, I'll be playing until we leave the system. And it's going to be up to you to decide if you want to continue this save. You could use this as a way to replicate and, and, and learn the game. Or you could use this as your proper game save and follow me along accordingly. So you've started in A War for X. You've watched my setup videos. You've had a look at the game. And you've made a conventional starting empire. The year is 202050, and we are in Seoul right now. What we're going to do is we're going to explain what our initial starting steps will be, and then we'll move on from there. So, we need a ship, we need uh, technology, we need to change our industry, and we need to uh, get our first colony. So, get our technology, get our first ship, get our first colony and then move on from there. So how do we do that? Well, there's a few starting things we need to do. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to uh, the race tab. I'm going to change this button here to five. The reason for this is our officers will be have higher training on our ships. It's a small thing you want to set up at the start, but that's what I do. Uh, we're then going to go over to the commander's window. We're going to turn on automated assignments. This is so that our commanders actually get assigned to where they need to be assigned to. And we pretty much set up everything that I would want to set up besides actually, you know, inputting, you know, important relevant data. Now, I'm going to assume that most people who are watching this have a general idea of how to play the game in terms of the UI and whatnot. But they don't really know how to put that into application. If you want to see more detail on how to like what the UI means, what this button means, what that means. I recommend taking a look at the newbie starter playlist because I go over that in that playlist. Those are some older videos, but they should still be quite relevant. So we're then going to go into our industry tab. Now, because we started conventional, if we go to the summary here, which is the economics, we can see that we have conventional industry. We have maintenance facilities, a deep space tracking station, but we've got quite little in terms of anything. I started with a standard population of a billion people, which is the standard in the current version of Aurora 4 XC Sharp, which is 2.11. And this means that we start with 1,600 conventional industry. Now, conventional industry one-to-one -one converts with various trans-Newtonian facilities, but we can't yet take advantage. So we're going to need to be able to take advantage of that because right now conventional industry only provides us with 1,600 bill points, which is very low, and it only provides us with um, minuscule amounts of other capabilities. So you can see here, we do actually produce fuel. That is because of our conventional industry produces fuel. It also acts as fighter factories. It acts as... Um, uh, conventional industry and all uh, uh, industry, and it also acts as mining, all in one. So it can, it's kind of a, a catch-all. The problem is, comparatively to a construction factory, one conventional industry is ten times less efficient, and we don't really want that. Uh, and we want to be able to move on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our research tab here, which is again under the economics window in the research area, and we're going to want to grab transnewtonian technology. Now, transitioning technologies under construction and production, you'll be wanting to use a scientist that has that bonus. Every scientist which has the same bonus as the technology category you're researching, you get a four times multiplier on the total research. So if we add this guy here, we get a 1.8x multiplier, which means we get four times 20% or 20, which is 80% uh, essentially. Um, and that means we have a 80% bonus to researching it with a max the max bonus modification would be three times now if you don't have a scientist like we for example don't have logistic scientists so we have a lot of sensors vine controls and ground support, uh, ground combat guys if you don't have this you can change the field of the scientist you have 
So if we go over here and we go to, let's say, our sense and fire controls and we hit, um, you know, change field, this will reduce that bonus by 75%, but that would like to change field to, say, energy weapons from sense and fire controls. Now, I'm not going to use our highest guy here, even though that will give us a 5% bonus for our uh, for other research. I'm instead going to change our 0% to, and then we can train them up over time. So I'm going to say, okay, I want this guy in logistics. Okay, I want this guy in defensive systems because we don't have a defensive systems guy. Uh, okay, I want this guy in uh, biology and genetics because we don't have a biology and genetics person. Okay, I want this guy in energy weapons because we don't have an energy weapons person. And that kind of distributes our scientists a bit more evenly. These scientists are going to play a really important role in being able to do anything. Um, and so that is why we need to generate more of them. Now, there are two ways to do this. Um, build more academies, military academies, and that's where they get trained from. You can see the university they went to here, Earth. And they're signing specific categories. So if we assign a scientist to the academy academy there's a high ch chance of generating more scientists and that's really what we want and so that is why i'm going to be assigning because we don't win any ground combat yet i'm going to be assigning our ground combat uh, guy here and this will generate more scientists now they won't generate as far as i understand more ground combat scientists but just scientists in general um and another thing that we forgot to do and that we are that you want to make sure to is get governor in aurora percentage bonuses are everything and that's why we want them um they're so, so powerful because we can get a guy here if we do production. We get a guy that gets 10% production. And that 10% production is going to mean that we get another 160 build points. And that really starts to scale up as you increase your industry capability. And that guy trains himself up. So with that done, um, we have Transitonian research on the way. That is going to take us until 2020, the end of the year. Uh, so November 13th. And... What we're then going to do is we're going to build stuff in that time. So we have we can build approximately 1760 BP of something in that time, and we are going to create one. Now, why do I say within that time? That's because when we unlock that technology, we will then be able to use the proper Transnewtonian facilities, which we don't yet have access to. And again, I want the military academy here because the military academy is going to increase our generation of scientists, which will speed up our overall research, and that's why you want it. Then we're going to head over to our shipyards. Now our shipyards are going to be needed to be planned for the classes and designs that we want. Now the first survey vessel I generally like to build is 3,000 tons. It's a decent tonnage. 1,000 tons is just a bit too small really for the kind of vessel that I want to create. And that vessel is something that can transverse Seoul, which is about 16 billion kilometers in diameter and then usable area. And we want to put enough sensors on that it's done in a relatively decent amount of time. Now, because it's going to have sensors on it, it's going to be a naval shipyard needed because that'll make it a military ship or needing naval, naval ship. We added tonnage here. That'll complete on 2026, September, and that will allow us to design that ship. The next thing that we want to do is think about, okay, well, once we've surveyed the areas, what are we going to do? How are we going to colonize? How are we going to do all this kind of stuff? And that's where commercial shipping is going to come in and handy for us. We want to get a commercial ship that will be capable and ready enough to be able to colonize the moon, Mars, and any planetary body that has a lot of minerals on it, which we don't yet know because we don't have a survey vessel available to us. So we're going to increase the tonnage. We're going to use concealed capacity. Um, I recommend using concealed capacity because um, if you do just add 2,000 tons, uh, and, and actually I'm going to change this, uh, 2,000 tons, it will not, and you cancel it, it will uh, keep the capacity that's already done. If you do just go to 2,000, it will not do that. So we're going to increase this to 50,000 tons. Because in Aurora, that's generally where the first kind of freighters kind of sit. About 30 to 50,000 tons. Because a cargo uh, bay is or a cargo hold is about 25,000 tons in total. The, the normal sized one. So if you add on engines to that, you'll get 30,000 tons ish. And like you add a fuel, you'll get 40,000 tons. So it's around there in terms of tonnage. Um, now, th there's not much else for us to really think about. We could think about doing ground forces to build that, and we may get to that in a little bit, but we've kind of set up everything that we really want to set up. There isn't really anything else that we can do. So now we're going to do one day increments, but before we do that, we're going to turn on this little checkbox over here on the left-hand side of the screen, as you can see, the events window. The events window will appear events here, but you can also turn on the event log and put this to a second 
can move this over to a second uh, screen if you've got a second screen it's very handy if you do but keep in mind if you have this open it will cause more lag than just the event log here so to so keep that in mind so let's do one day increments again we're going to be waiting for that transmutation technology to be done um, and we are blitzing through days we're currently in february march um and again we've been waiting until november Here comes August and September and then October and then finally November when Transnewtonian technology should finish up for us. There we go. We've completed research into Transnewtonian technology. Now, many things have changed for us with Transnewtonian technology done. You can see here that we can convert industry to a bunch of different things. We can also build a lot of different other facilities. So a lot has changed in that regard. We also have access to many new different kinds of researchers like... Uh, pet radioisotope thermal generators, jump point theory, um, a bunch of different ground combat capabilities, energy weapons, and more. So, when we think about our research that we've just now completed Transitonian, so that's, that's the next logical step, right, is what do we next research? We need to be thinking about, okay, well, our goal was to get a survey ship, and then our goal was to colonize. How do we do that effectively? Well, we're going to need an engine, that's obvious, and so we're going to be spending some of our power propulsion guys on a radioisotope generator, thermal generator. Now, this is the prerequisite for uh, trans-Newtonian engines. Now, you start with a conventional engine, and you can make ships with that, sure. But it's a lot less powerful, like a lot, between that and a trans-Newtonian engine. And so we're going to put, um, I would say, four laboratories into radioisotope generator. But then we're also going to need to be thinking about um, armor, because when you start with a conventional game, you have available to you conventional armor. Now, you may be thinking, well, we're not going to be fighting anything. Why would we need armor? Armor is not just for fighting. It's also for um, efficiency of the hull, right? So imagine that you've got big slabs of steel at the moment. We want to be using a composite that will bring the weight down. Well, it's not weight, <laughs> it's volume, but allow us to get uh, stuff in a smaller space. A small space, a lower tonnage, uh, more stuff in a, in, a, in a smaller tonnage, and to do that, we're going to need better armor technologies. And so we're going to put in the research here because it's cheap. It will improve our survey ship, and that's what I want to achieve. So we're going to assign defensive systems. We're going to do four labs into that. Uh, then we're going to go over to our sensors and control systems. Again, how do we survey? Well, we're going to need geological survey sensors because we can't survey asteroids and planets and Mars, Mars and Mercury and Venus if we don't have access to geological survey sensors. So we're going to put on four into that. And then finally, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to begin researching into cryogenic transport because we're going to be needing cryogenic transport to achieve desired effect of colonization now you may be asking why don't you just blitz one research and then do the other research and do that research yes you can do that but i want all these things to finish up equidistant to themselves and also the more scientists you have researching things the bigger the uh, chance of them increasing their skill level because you've got more potential scientists learning more chances and we want to get these guys trained up as much as we possibly can because that's going to be really important for the mid game the late game and then as we get into the overall game right so with that done we now need to think about our industry so we have our military academy here we're going to let that finish up because it's already going to be completed by may of next year you can see the uh the date there 15th of may we then need to be thinking about conversions now as i talked about earlier construction factories are a lot more efficient in fact actually a lot more efficient than just these very generalized very inefficient conventional industries relative to what we can build with tn facilities so i'm going to kind of go through what i like to do now we want a good amount of construction factories because that's going to build everything because we need to be able to build things a lot of things to industry infrastructure all sorts we'll be needing to build them we want a good amount of mines because, as you may see, we have a lot of in, uh, minerals on the planet. And we also want to be able to eventually move those mines off planet. And then we also are going to be wanting some fuel refineries because right now our conventional industry is doing that for us. But if we get rid of all our conventional industry, we don't have any fuel refineries. And then finally, we're going to be wanting some financial centers because 
Provincial industry, um, we're going to be expanding our construction a lot and we're going to be running out of probably some money and we need to be careful that we don't run into some kind of deficit. Um, the ordnance and the fighter factories, those are for missiles and for fighters. We're not going to be touching either of those today, uh, but we are going to start our conversion process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order the 800 of our conventional industry, which we have 1,600 of, be converted. I'm going to have 50% equal to the percentage of construction factories that we are affecting. Then we are going to convert uh, 600 to mines. And that we're going to put at 40%. The remaining 5% of either we're going to have as 100 fuel refineries. And 100 financial centers. And that's all we need for our conventional industry conversion. Uh, keep in mind that you'll have less if you start with less population, and you can also change this to how you meet, but remember that you will need to meet those things. Make sure that we can still make fuel, make sure that we don't get bankrupt, make sure that we are uh, have enough mines to actually feed the factories, because if we have way too many construction factories and not enough mines, we can't feed those factories, uh, because our production will be sky high and our mining rates will be sky low, so you need to give somewhat of a balance here um, to, the, to these areas. Now, it's probably going to tell you that it will take quite a bit of time, but once the conversion starts for those construction factories, those construction factories will start helping build more construction factories or convert more construction factories. And as you can see here, the conversion cost is quite low. If we built a construction factory from start, it would cost us um, five times more uh, or six times more resources than otherwise. So keep that in mind. With that done, and our shipyards continue with their capacity upgrade and research going well, uh, we are going to start incrementing once more. Let's do five day increments this time because we want to speed things up. And we can see the uh, lovely star system there. Conventional composite armor is done, and now with that done, I want to begin research onto conventional and advanced composite, which is the third of three armor generations used before the development of trans-Newtonian material science. So this is think of this as like material science, essentially, is what we're developing. We completed our military academy and now we can start construction on our trans Newtonian uh, stuff. As you can see here, it's going to say 2044, that's 20 years away. Well, once the construction factories start their work, it's going to significantly lessen. Geological survey centers are also just completed. With that completion, we now want to be moving away from uh, uh, sensor technologies. We don't need them, uh, a lot of this stuff in here just, just yet. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to our ground combat scientists. I'm going to start researching on Triope Transport Standard. We don't have the ability to be able to move stuff um, currently in terms of uh, non-conventional. So we do have access to a true transport bay, um, as you can see here. But it's very, very big and very cumbersome, and it's going to potentially cause us some problems. So um, I'm not going to want that i'm going to want a more powerful true transport bay a more efficient true transport bay and so that's why i'm going for a standard true transport bay which is the trans newtonian variant we complete research into the radioisotope generator so now we're going to begin research into the nuclear radioisotope engine which is the first engine technology so i believe the calculation as you can see here it provides five power per hull space hull space is 50 tons a conventional engine provides one engine power per HS, so it's five times more efficient, though each engine iteration after this is not going to be as big of a jump as you may see. So we definitely want this because that will make our ships much, much faster and get the job done much, much quicker than building some dinky conventional ships that we're not really going to need. Uh, we just finished research into our defensive systems. Uh, we're going to now get the first tier of trans armor, which is Duranium armor. Now, we've just finished up our continual capacity upgrade to our naval shipyard, and I'm going to add a second slipway. Now, a slipway allows you to build multiple ships from the same shipyard at once. However, it obviously costs quite a bit. It costs 720 resources. We're still going to do it because we want to be able to rapidly produce these survey ships. I'm going to be aiming for about 2030 when we, when we can get these ships out um, and start building. So let's continue our increments along here. We complete uranium armor and also another thing to notice we've got a lot better scientists coming across here and they're really starting to do pretty well for themselves but with the uranium armor now done we can then redirect those uh that research elsewhere now something that i'm going to be wanting to do is thinking about a trans newtonian cargo shuttles that will improve our cargo transports which we will be developing in the future 
With the additional research that we do have, however, we're going to be focusing down getting some of our other technologies, and so I'm going to just add these research labs into the existing projects that we have. Project Transport has just completed. That will allow us to move colonists without in mass, essentially. Again, we can technically move colonists with the tra luxury passenger accommodation, but it's expensive and only can carry a relatively few amount of colonists, uh, which is not really what we're looking for when we're looking to colonize the solar system. Then, finally, now that those two researches are done, um, I'm going to be looking at some other research that we could potentially add that could help us, and that is going to be, again, trans cargo shuttles, which should significantly help logistics of unloading and loading freighters and cargo ships. We just completed the nuclear radioisotope engine, and now we're going to be designing ourselves some survey engine. Now, what do I mean by survey engine? An engine for a survey ship is essentially the definition of that. And in this case, we're going to design with the tier 1 engine, a normal radioisotope nuclear engine. So what do we want from a ship that is surveying? Well, we're not going to be only to combat. And speed's generally something you would think a, a, a fast combat vessel would need. And we're not really going to be needing um, super max range. But we also, we don't want to be too slow or too fast to either have way too much fuel or way too uh, much speed and have too little fuel. We want something in the middle uh, and we want something that will be reasonable. And so the largest engine we can currently research is a 25HS engine, which is 1,250 1, tons. Again, keeping our naval shipyard in mind, we can go for a 3,000 ton ship. So this one engine will be uh, a total of 1,250 tons. That's a little bit too much because if we put two engines in there, that will be 2,500 tons. We want to be going for a size 20 engine, I think. You may be asking, why use two engines at all? Liability is a concern, but also um, we can't fit to... We want to get as much speed as we can. And if we have the largest engine, 25 HS, and we put two of them there, we won't have enough space to put the other stuff on. So we're going to do engine size 20 HS, and then I'm going to reduce the fuel consumption. So we can have a default power that gives us engine power of 100. But if we just reduce this a little bit to 80, we can almost halve, uh, effectively more than half our fuel use power, which is significant. Um... And so I'm going to go for a engine power of 75% because, yes, that is going to reduce our speed quite significantly. However, it's going to be worthy, in my opinion, of the fuel consumption gains, which means that we will need less fuel to power them. And it will also mean that we will they will need to come back and refuel from our ships less. And we don't need to put as much fuel storage on our ships. And so we're going to hit uh, create for this. And we're going to begin immediate research. So once created, you're going to need to go into your, uh, your research over here and begin researching like you did with your power propulsion technology. And that's what exactly what we're going to do. And with that done, we now have completed it. And we're going to also expand that shipyard that just finished its concealed capacity upgrade. There we go. You can see that industry is now rapidly expanding, which is fantastic. We have 65 construction factories now. And we finished up the research so we can begin to design our first ship, that being our survey ship. So, what do we want? We're going to create a new ship class at the bottom here. We're going to select this as a survey ship. There we go. And with the survey ship, we're going to add two engines. So, those are the two nuclear radioisotope engines. And then we're going to add a geological survey sensor. We're going to increase the deployment time. Now, why do we want to increase the deployment time? The deployment time is how long the ship can go without the crew losing morale from being too far away from home without the right amenities, the right uh, food and supplies and another very useful things that you need. Now, I'm going to say that we're going to need about 24 months. So that's two years. So the mission time will be about two years. We then need to get maintenance life up. Now, maintenance life, and it should be in par with deployment time or even higher than deployment time, because that's going to be how long your ship has until it needs to come back, get a refit, get an overhaul, which is what's called an overhaul. And that's going to take some, some significant work. So we're going to add ourselves in. Um, not an engineering space, because if you look here at IFR, which is the chance of a failure every five days, is 0.8%. 
This means that we don't need um, any engineering space because this is really low already. So we can go for a maintenance storage bay. And that will give us a ton of maintenance life. 6.9 years. Fantastic. And that's the same size as one engineering space that we could have gotten anyway. We're then going to add in some fuel. So we're going to add in fuel here. And we're going to fill up and round up the tonnage until we can get to 3,000 tons. So what have we created? We've created a survey ship with two engines, a range of 38 billion kilometers, and a gravitational uh, geological survey sensors with, or, or, that can actually geologically survey. Now, why did I select 38 billion kilometers for our range? Well, if we have a look at the solar system and you hold shift and you drag, you can have a look at the distances. So from the inner solar system, and the inner solar system all the way out, it's about 13 billion kilometers. So there and back again, we can do from there to there. Um, and 38 billion kilometers will be plenty enough because obviously you're not going in a straight line all the time. You're going to be moving side to side. You're going to be moving all around. And so we're okay with that design. And so with that design now accomplished, it's done. We don't need to do anything with it. We can then go over to our shipyards. And we're going to be waiting for the slipway to complete. Once the slipway is complete, we're going to start construction on those two new vessels. We do, however, need to begin research onto the next generation of engine technologies because engine technology in Aurora is king. Pressurized water reactor just finished up and then we're going to begin research into nuclear thermal engines. And True Transport Bay is also complete, which means that we can do our True Transports uh, all effectively now. Um, and I'm going to begin research into Diversifier Research a little bit. And we're going to begin researching into um, construction technology that will increase our construction rate and uh, speed up some other benefits. Uh, our industry is also now really starting to go ahead with all these 60 more construction factories and the times have gone down significantly. A slipway has been added and we're going to then hit retool. Your first retool is always free and available. So we're going to hit set activity. It's been retooled accordingly. And then we're going to hit shipyard fleet and create. Now, if you want to name your first intrepid ships that you've just started, you can go back to the class design window, go to the miscellaneous tab, select a name theme. Let's, for example, hit um, provinces or, or, or predatory fish. You know, well, let's be a little bit spicy. We can add a prefix, so for example, HMS. And then we can say select a random name from the theme. And we can even add a suffix if you really wanted to as well. We then go back, we do refresh the window. You just hit this, so we'll refresh it. And then we're going to build the first two. Now, it will be the HMS Piranha and the HMS Mako. And those will be done on April of 2029, very, very soon. And with those two constructed, we're now going to send them out to survey. So we're going to detach both of these and we're going to send them off to the survey. Now, before we do anything, we don't need to actually tell them to do any orders, like physical orders. We just need to set up their standing orders. A standing order is just an order that they will automatically try to accomplish uh, depending on the conditionals you set. So in this situation, the primary standing order I will set is survey the next five system bodies. So they will survey the next five system bodies that they can see. Then, if your fuel is less than 50%, you will refuel a colony. All in this case indicates that they will refuel from any colony in any system. S indicates they will only refuel from any colony within the system. So we're going to hit all. Then, if your deployment time is exceeded, you are going to uh, overhaul at colony. Okay. And once overhauled, you will then re come back because the overhaul will keep them in place and then we'll move back. We're going to do the exact same thing with the makeup. Now, you all have seen that we already have commanders assigned to both of these, but we do also want to make sure that they're in a survey command. If we go over here, we select survey from our admin command type, admin command type and we hit create admin, we need to create something called a survey command. The purpose of a survey command is they provide a bonus to the ships within them um, 
depending on the officer you put in there. So we're going to say, hey, I want you to put a survey officer in. I'm going to hit automated assignment for the admin command with it selected. Say required bonus survey. And I'm going to hit him in and we've got a 30% survey guy and they'll provide a bonus to these two ships. And that means that we have a geological survey of 1.13, even though we only actually provide one point. With that done, we're then going to begin one day increments as we go around and survey the system. You can see all these guys vastly just do massive surveys of the entire solar system and they should be done in a relatively short amount of time. If you want to see the minerals or generation, you can hit mineral concentrations on the left hand side to see what minerals are on which planets. And you can also go to the mineral text here and refresh the page by just re-putting in Sol. And as we can see here, Jupiter has Saurium. Venus has no resources that we can detect. We found no artifacts. The minerals, Mercury has some uranium, but very low accessibilities. And that means they're not going to be too, too essentially useful uh, for what we need. With nuclear thermal engine now done, we're going to begin research into fuel efficiency because we want our freighters that we'll be designing here shortly to be more fuel efficient. We finished up construction rate production, and now we're going to begin research into research rate 240p. This means that each lab will produce more research. Uh, yep. And we discovered a ruined settlement on Titan. So we have found that there is a settlement on Titan, and this can happen to you. You can find ruins on various bodies. It's actually the first time I found it on Titan. Um, in fact, and there's a lot of corundium on Titan. So that means that we really would want to colonize Titan in the next episode, which I am going to see you guys then because I'm done. And uh, this is the first part done. I'll see you guys in the next episode where we begin our colonization efforts. Goodbye. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really does help me out. And I'll see you guys next time.